much when it comes to personal credit. When I actually met him, my personal credit wasn't on point. I had to figure out the hard way, y'all. I had to figure out exactly how to go out and get credit cards and all these other things and settle for less yeah. because I did not have my personal credit corrected. All right? I did not know about personal credit at all. So I had to find out you know, uh, other ways around of getting my personal credit. Uh, I mean, I had to find other ways around to be able to get things with just my business credit alone. But we all know when you're going out to go apply for these things for your business credit, at some point in time, you're going to need that personal credit, right? Am I not right, Kev? That's for sure. That's yeah, for, sure. I, for sure. I can't be going, you can have all the money in the world. I can have $300,000, but if I'm if I'm trying to go get this a million dollar house, they're going to check my credit before they see how much money I got. <laughs> that 300 right? ain't going to be nothing. <laughs> yeah, uh, I can't get the house then. You know what I mean? Uh, so today, like I said, we got my guy All Cash Kev on here and he here to talk to us a lot about growing your personal credit, what you need on it, exactly what to add on. All right, now that's not, that's one thing. Now, Kev, I will say that that's one mm -hmm. thing that you do a lot different than a lot of these other people out here because when I first was trying to get my personal credit worked on, right, mm -hmm. the guy and uh, it was two people, they told me, hey, listen, if we about to get ready to go ahead, we're going to clear your personal credit. And that was pretty much it. That was it. They was like, we're going to clear your personal credit, but that's not it. That's not, that's all you need, right? No, that's not all you need. And the reason we do it different is because the majority of my clients are entrepreneurs. You know, mm -hmm. they're people who want to start and grow a business. So, when you when you're cleaning your credit, you know, you may have had some issues that, that mess you up back in back in the day. You had some some bills that you didn't pay, some late payments, might have repossession or something like that. But uh, getting those cleaned off is going to you know, get your credit clean and you're not going to have those derogatories on there. But in order for you to see that score start to go up, you need to start adding more positive accounts. You know, your credit profile is, is a lot more important than that actual credit score. Let me let me stop you real quick on that. So uh, most people inside of this group all right, because we are on TikTok live and we also uh, are doing this on YouTube. So for the people that don't know what derogatories are, you know what I mean? What exactly does that what does that mean? Like, what do I need to look for? Like, you know, if I'm looking at my credit score what and I see derogatories, like what, what does this mean? You know, so when we, when we say derogatories, we're talking about pretty much any negative effect in the count. So uh, uh, late payment is going to be a derogatory. A collection account is going to be a derogatory. A charge off is going to be a derogatory. Uh, anything that's that's negatively af affecting your credit history or your credit report with that particular credit. So um, we want to get all of those off. Essentially, you don't want any derogatories on your on your credit report. You know your child support, your bankruptcies, your foreclosures, your Ooh, child support hit you. Child, child support, support you. man. Child support showing your credit. Oh, y'all did y'all hear that? Child support even hit your personal credit. Now y'all y'all better watch out for that. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so we uh we we really stress to get all of that stuff removed. Now, when you get all of that removed, some people don't really have credit. You know, all cash, Kev. I came from a a, a time of just use. I use cash for everything, just like you were saying. Uh, and I had to actually grow to understand credit and learn how to utilize it. Uh, when I was really, well, I still do real estate investing, but when I started out, I was using pure cash. And just knowing that, you know, I could put up $100,000 for this house cash, or I could leverage $10,000 into a loan for this house, you yeah. know, it changes the game. I could buy 10 houses instead of buying one house with that same 100000 So having your personal credit in position in order to you know personally guarantee you want to make sure you set everything up right get all those derogatories off and then once you get them off you want to start adding positive accounts accounts that show good payment history accounts that show good credit credit limits that they've given to you uh accounts that are going to stay on your credit report for a, a series of time that's going to help affect it in the long run okay uh also all right let's say that all right what do you feel like is the best thing to be able to shoot for? Well, what do you feel like the best thing is about having your personal credit clear, like having your personal credit excellent or even, you know, good? What do you feel like the best thing is about that versus somebody having, and we're talking about people that's trying to actually go out and get their businesses funded, be able to go out and get credit lines and credit cards and all these other things. So, yeah, I know the majority. Go ahead. What do you think the best benefit is of them having a, a good personal credit score when it comes to business? It's putting yourself in a position where they can't tell you no. You know what I mean? <laughs> when you have a business and, and you're out, you're running this business, you're paying for your employees, you're paying for all the overhead, the rent, the lights, 
the uh, the supplies, you know, you're covering all of these expenses out of pocket or with the profits that come in from the business. All right. That's just a hamster wheel. That's that's a hamster wheel. And a lot of people who run businesses, you know, a large percentage of small businesses fail just because they don't have enough cash to keep them, keep them alive. You can't keep the lights on. So when you have good personal credit, when they can look at you and say that, hey, this person as an individual is a responsible borrower, we can give them a certain amount of money. And we know based on their credit report, they're going to pay this money back. When you go and you try to get business credit or business loans, Mm-hmm. typically you can go one of two ways you know the way you go EIN you don't, you don't run any credit no personal guarantees nothing like that and that's going to get you through the door you're going to get far that's what people just start to need yeah, to get, get they, through the door yeah gotta get you through the door but when we talking about you want to you want to build and scale your business it's just like you're your brand you're your business all right so if they can't depend on you to pay back these loans why are they going to depend on this LLC that's essentially air you know what I mean? A lot of people start an LLC three months later. They want to go get it funded and you can get it funded and you can you can grow your business that way. But you having your own personal credit that's showing for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years that you've been continuously getting credit. You've been continuously paying this back. They're going to be amped to give you a, a larger limit in a quicker amount of time than they would just off using your EIN. So having your personal credit in place. Man, you could buy anything you want. A 750 credit score, you could buy anything you want as long as your profile look good. You know, so understanding to put your personal credit is going to be your foundation mm-hmm. to actually growing and scaling your business. When Once you understand that, man, sky's the limit with what you can do. Yeah, see, I, I, I think that uh, what most people don't understand is on the business side, if you don't, if you don't have all that good personal credit, right? I mean, if you don't have, yeah, if you don't have all that good personal credit, and you're trying to get into the field of business, trying to get your uh, business funded and everything. I think most people don't see like, okay, listen, if I don't have good personal credit, I maybe can go out and get ten thousand dollars. But if I had actual good personal credit, I can go out and get fifty thousand. I can go out and get a hundred k. You know what I mean? Easily off, just like you just got done saying, a three month old business because they're able to use your personal credit as collateral. You know what I mean? They see that this person can actually get a loan or get a credit card and actually pay it back off. You know what I mean? So they'll be more willing to give you even more funds if you had your personal credit with. Absolutely. Because they, they're coming, they they can depend on you. If, if the business doesn't survive, they can depend on you who's been responsible over a certain period of time to actually step in and pay that loan back. They know that you're a responsible bar. So having your personal credit just in point on point, and having everything set in stone to where, you know, I've had credit for five years. I've had more than 10 accounts. You know, I don't ask that many people for money. You know, uh, just having that set in stone and when they pull it, you know, it's, it's the difference between you getting a $5,000 credit card and going to get a $25,000 credit card when it comes to your business. You one, more, I mean? one more question with that. So you you said uh, how many people they ask for money? I remember last time we were talking, that was a very important thing that you said, like, you know, you really got to look at how many people you asking for money, because that's that's another thing they look at when you look at inquiries and you also like constantly getting denied and you just applying for things you don't know you're going to get approved for. Like, is that a big factor when it comes to, uh, you know, when you got the big banks, you got other people looking at your credit to give you like a, a high limit, you know what I mean, a funding or whether that's a credit card or a, a credit limit? You know? Yeah, that's definitely a big thing. I mean, nobody, number one, nobody wants to be the first person to give you ten, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars. They just typically mm-hmm. don't want to be the first person. So when you uh when you're going out and you're you're asking all of these different banks or these different people for money, they want to know who else gave you the money if you ask them. So yeah. if you got five inquiries on there, your inquiries are basically everybody that you ask for money, everybody that you ask to supply you with a loan or a credit card or anything of that nature. And if they see six people that you've asked over a short period of time and all of them have no accounts reflecting on your credit report, it's typically yeah. like, you know, we don't, we might deny you too. You ask yeah, five people, they said no, you definitely high risk. You've asked five or six people, they've all said no. We don't know the exact reason they're saying no, but you're just, you know, you're, you're asking everybody for money. So we're going to hold off right now. And that's typically how it goes when you get too many inquiries on your credit report. So you want to make sure you keep those down to a certain number. Okay. Well, then, all right. So the main question that we want to get ready to go ahead and get to inside of here, Kev, that I'm pretty sure majority of people want to know inside this YouTube 
and on TikTok. Exactly. Now that we went over exactly, okay, what they're looking for inside the credit, what exactly do I need? Because like I told you, when I first started off on trying to get my credit fixed, mm -hmm. they just told me pretty much they was going to clear my credit. That was it. So even when I had my credit cleared, though, even when I had it cleared, if I had no good accounts or anything on it, I still wouldn't be able to go out and get approved, right? I learned that, right? Because that's something that I realized you did different than all these other people out here is you don't just clear the credit. You add on the right accounts that they need. That way they can go out and make sure they get that approval. Right. You want to make sure your credit profile has a certain number of accounts on it, because if you don't have enough accounts, you don't have enough credit history. You don't have enough credit age. You know, your limits probably aren't high enough. So when you're when you're cleaning, when you're cleaning your credit, typically, you know, the average person probably has, you know, 10 to 12 accounts on there, including the derogatory. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? So when we start cleaning off those derogatory records, say you got four or five of them on there, you down to, you know, five or six accounts and five or six accounts just isn't enough. For them to actually say we can we can take the average and say that this guy has been paying back this for a certain period of time so we right. want to try and add more accounts on there positive reflecting accounts exactly would you say how many accounts if we had to know the exact number so if i'm if i'm fixing my credit right now right i'm fixing my credit and uh also for those people who need uh their credit repaired by specifically all cash care that's going to be down in the link down below also for you guys but let's just say that they get their they're getting their uh credit uh repair right how many accounts do i need to know that i need to have on there before i even start going out and approving like to go apply for things i'm gonna say 10 i'm comfortable with 10 they say 8 to 12 10, 10 accounts if you get 10, 10 accounts 10 positive reflecting accounts 10 solid accounts on your credit report and you get everything else on your credit report that we explained in the other YouTube videos or in the other interviews, when you get everything on your account that lines up with those 10 accounts, you're going to get approved. You know what I mean? It's the profile. So you want to make sure you have, if you got five or less accounts, you too light. You know what I mean? Anything over 10, you in a good position. As long as you get those derogatories off, zero derogatories. I want to stress zero derogatories. You can definitely go ahead and apply with one, one derogatory. You may get approved. You may get denied. The approvals are typically just like it would be if you were doing business funding without personally guaranteeing. It's going to be a lower limit than it would be if you didn't have those derogatories on there. So you want to make sure you, you want to make sure you got no derogatories on there. Take the extra month, take the extra week, whatever it takes, the extra two months to get that off before you go and apply. Yeah. So that's definitely what I recommend. Ten accounts at minimum. One thing that I I, I think that, that really touched me when I was getting into the field of business and personal credit, just figuring out everything is that I was like, dang, you know, the top five percent of rich people out in this world, you know, they uh, you know, most people are fine credit cards is bad, but it's like um you, when you actually see exactly how the top five percent of rich people out in this world are actually using them, they're using them to their benefit. They use it to their benefit. And when I say the benefit, they're going out on free trips. They're going out to the hotels because they're able to, like, gather points from their credit cards and all other type of things. Right. And it's also mm -hmm. another thing that uh, that I, I hear a lot of people talk about. And that so far as making money off of the, uh, the the credit cards, because as you're as you're gaining now, this is not something that you just automatically jump into. But right. of course, it takes time. But once you're once you have of credit cards because this, this is what i've just heard and i'm just asking you on that right so uh if i'm that person that literally i got good personal credit i've had it for a year and i go out let's say i i end up just applying for credit cards and i get like five solid credit cards that i'm no longer using right i was using them just a year ago but i'm no longer using them and they're all they're all at at least a ten thousand dollar limit right uh there's a saying that people actually are making money off the credit cards they just you know have sitting around you know what i mean uh, and that's another benefit of also just getting your uh personal credit right you know what i mean i feel like that's a big because of me i'm a business-minded person and I, I don't like i told you the other day like i'm a student of success so like when it comes to making money I, i'm never gonna stop my process of learning more more ways of making money you know what i right. mean Right. Uh, what would you feel on that subject? Have you ever made I, man, That's definitely a business. It's always been a business. It's always going to be a business. So mm -hmm. if you have five credit cards that are just sitting in your drawer right now, $10,000 limits, you're not using them. That's within itself is a business that can be run from your bed. All mm -hmm. right. 
people what people do is they take those credit cards and they uh they add people on as authorized users i mean depending on the age and the limit of the credit card people may charge you anywhere from from 350 500 on up to i've paid at least 2500 dollars to be added on as an authorized user to get that credit that credit history on your credit report and add those positive accounts that we're talking about and what is the benefit that that gives by you if i'm that person that that's trying to get my personal credit right. And I'm trying to get the fastest way to be able to get it right. Right. Mm -hmm. And I know that all cash Kev has uh, trade lines that he can put for me. What benefit, what, what, what benefit does that give me to be able to get as an authorized user on your credit card? Well, if my credit cards are at, you know, zero to 2% utilization mm -hmm. and you know, they got 10 to 15 years worth of history and mm -hmm. you came to me and you have never had a credit card. And you've yep. only got three years worth of credit history. As soon as we add my credit card on your profile, you're going to get that 15 years worth of history added to your credit card. Right. You're going you're gonna to get that utilization of being at zero to two percent for those 15 years on your credit card. You right. also going to get whatever limit my credit cards are at placed on your credit report because you're an authorized user to this credit account. So right. once that hits your account, all of those data points we're talking about, your age, your utilization, the actual accounts putting on. That's going to shoot your credit score up through the roof. You so know what saying, I mean? Basically, if I didn't have a $10,000 trade line connected to me and I couldn't go out and get it, I can get added as an authorized user on yours. And that 10000 will show as my credit history, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. It's going to wow. pop up and it's going to show them that, hey, he got this $10,000 credit card. He's had it for this, this long of a period. He's got no late payments on it. All right, he he good to go. We can see Real what we can do with him. Yeah. <laughs> Easy credit. Yeah. So that's why I said that's that's another thing that I just heard about when it comes to the credit industry and on why more people need to build their personal credit. You know what I mean? Because credit is king. When people say credit is king, I'm telling y'all, that's what that's what majority of people don't realize is because this is why I try to keep people away from spending their own money. Like you got your own money inside the bank account, but so many people are used to using their own money and they and that's because they don't know the simple fact the power of credit they don't right. understand that you can go out and get other people's money if you had your personal credit right be a, right. And, and be able to generate more income with somebody else's money right you know right. what i mean right. so uh yeah that's that's the craziest part about it uh so and, it's, it's so simple i like to talk about you know it's a couple of acronyms i i got taught a while back opm opi ope yeah. all right we okay. talk about the top 5%. I hear you talk about it a lot. All right. Yep. Top 5% understand that. OPM, other people's money. All yep. right. If if the shit hits the fan, excuse my language. I don't even know if I can curse on him. Yeah, but if yeah. it hits the fan, let me ask you a serious question. Whose money you want to lose? Yours or theirs? Theirs. Huh. All right. So we, <laughs> it was never my money. Yeah, you're right. All right. So we're going to use OPM, right? All yeah. right. When, when we're trying to get something done, all right. Would you rather do it yourself or would you rather pay to get it done? I'd rather pay to get it done. Other people's efforts, right? Yeah. All right. Now, when, I like that. when we start putting together things like, you know, utilizing social media or utilizing other marketing platforms. All right. Was this something that you came up with or was this some somebody else's idea? Oh, say that again. When we talk about being on social media, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, were, were these your ideas? Did you come up with these platforms or was it somebody else's idea? No, it was somebody else's ideas. Other people's ideas. Mm -hmm. All right. OPM, OPE, OPI. Top 5% uh, operate on yeah. other people's money, other people's efforts, and other people's ideas. All right. That way you're going to work less in your business and work more on your business. And mm -hmm. when people start to understand that, they can start to scale and grow. All right. It starts with the foundation of you knowing yourself, mindset, credit, you know, getting getting everything set and understood that I am going to be the foundation for whatever I'm trying to build. Your yeah. personal credit is going to be the foundation for any other credit you try to go apply for. And you can do it with business credit and you want to do it with business credit, but you need to make sure that you're in line. Get your business together first. Right. You know what I mean. Can you say that line for us one more time for all the viewers that's listening? You said work more on your business, work more. Can you say that line one more time? That, oh, yeah. You want to be able to work. That that meant a lot. Yeah. You want to be able to work more on your business than you do in your business. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like your your manager. If if I have a manager and I see my manager out there with the uh, 
with, with just the employees, you know, yeah. let's say, let's say we run in the construction site and I see the foreman out there digging a the hole, the foreman, yeah. he's going to get fired. Uh -huh. Number one reason the foreman going to get fired is because I pay you to oversee the job. Mm -hmm. There's no way that you can oversee the job and understand what's going on on with, all around the business, working on the business. If you're in a hole, looking at the hole, I right. need you to be. I need you to be on the floor watching every employee that's out here. You want to get yourself in a position to where you're working on your business, not in your business. You don't want to be doing all these minimum wow. wage activities. You don't want to be doing all these things that you could you could really pay somebody else to do. They're probably going to do it more efficiently. They're probably going to do it fast. You want to yep. put yourself in a position to where you can work on your business so that you can grow your business. You know what? That's one thing I definitely understand in the field of business, though, is that we we, we limit ourselves to 24 hours. Right. Mm -hmm. We limit ourselves to 24 hours. But within those 24 hours, we don't realize how many us we can actually make. You know what I mean? Like how many 24 hours you're actually to be able to use, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Right. You got to go beyond that 24 hours. And the only way you go beyond that 24 hours is if you use that method that you just got done saying, which is other people's efforts, right? If I can't take care of something, right? Or if I'm not good at something, that was one thing that I said, like, if I'm not good at something, right? If I'm not good in this area, why would I be, if I take somebody that's actually good inside that area and place them there, I'm no longer bad at that area anymore. You get what right. I'm saying? Right. It's taken you, care of. You don't have to know how to do everything. You got to know how to find the right people that can do something. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, as long as you can put the people in position yep. so that put they can take together. over that task for you, I mean, it, the task is done. It doesn't have to be done by you individually. And when, as a business owner, you have to understand that separating yourself from that grunt work. Right. You know, scaling it up. That's the whole chain of hierarchy. You need to understand it if you want to right. go somewhere. Well, listen, Kev, I'm not going to take too much of your time out today. Listen, I appreciate you for coming on today and I appreciate you for giving.